If I had my life to live over again, I would have made a rule to read some poetry and listen to some music at least once every week. A man who dares to waste one hour of time has not discovered the value of life. Ignorance more frequently begets confidence than does knowledge. It is those who know a little, not those who know much, who so positively assert that this or that problem will never be solved by science. If the misery of the poor be caused not by the laws of nature, but by our institutions, great is our sin. We stopped looking for monsters under our bed when we realized that they were inside us. The love for all living creatures is the most noble attribute of man. I am not apt to follow blindly the lead of other men. It is not the strongest of the species that survives, not the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is the most adaptable to change. The mystery of the beginning of all things is insoluble by us, and I for one must be content to remain an agnostic. The highest possible stage in moral culture is when we recognize that we ought to control our thoughts. An American monkey, after getting drunk on brandy, would never touch it again and thus is much wiser than most men. Intelligence is based on how efficient a species became at doing the things they need to survive. Blushing is the most peculiar and most human of all expressions. One general law leading to the advancement of all organic beings, namely multiply, vary, let the strongest live and the weakest die. In the long history of humankind and animal kind, to those who learned to collaborate and improvise most effectively have prevailed. Besides love and sympathy, Animals exhibit other qualities connected with the social instincts which in us would be called moral. But I am very poorly today and very stupid and I hate everybody, everything. One lives only to make blunders. We must, however, acknowledge, as it seems to me, that man with all his noble qualities still bears in his bodily frame the indelible stamp of his lowly origin. Man selects only for his own good, nature only for that of the being which she tends. We can allow satellites, planets, suns, universe, nay whole systems of universe to be governed by laws, but the smallest insect we wish to be created at once by special act. Nothing is easier than to admit in words the truth of the universal struggle for life or more difficult, at least I have found it so, than constantly to bear this conclusion in mind. If it could be demonstrated that any complex organ existed, which could not possibly have been formed by numerous successive slight modifications, my theory would absolutely break down, but I can find no such case. Great is the power of steady misrepresentation. I see no good reasons why the views given in this volume should shock the religious views of anyone man in his arrogance thinks himself a great work, worthy of the interposition of a deity, more humble, and I believe truer, to consider him created from animals. 
There is no fundamental difference between man and animals in their ability to feel pleasure and pain, happiness and misery. For the shield may be as important for victory as the sword or spear. Freedom of thought is best promoted by the gradual illumination of men's minds which follows from the advance of science. To kill an heir is as good a service as, and sometimes even better than, the establishing of a new truth or fact. It is always advisable to perceive clearly our ignorance. I am not the least afraid to die. But then with me the horrid doubt always rises whether the convictions of man's mind, which has been developed, from the mind of the lower animals, are of any value or at all trustworthy would. Any one trust in the convictions of a monkey's mind, if there are any convictions in such a mind? We are not here concerned with hopes or fears, only with truth as far as our reason permits us to discover it. Nevertheless, so profound is our ignorance, and so high our presumption, that we marvel when we hear of the extinction of an organic being. And as we do not see the cause, we invoke cataclysms to desolate the world or invent laws on the duration of the forms of life. We are always slow in admitting any great change of which we do not see the intermediate steps. The very essence of instinct is that it's followed independently of reason. We will now discuss in a little more detail the struggle for existence. A scientific man ought to have no wishes, no affections, a mere heart of stone, the loss of these tastes for poetry and music is a loss of happiness and may possibly be injurious to the intellect and more probably to the moral character by enfeebling the emotional part of our nature. Wherever the European had trod, death seemed to pursue the aboriginal. I think it inevitably follows that as new species in the course of time are formed through natural selection, others will become rarer and rarer and, finally extinct, the forms which stand, I end closest competition with those, undergoing modification and improvement will naturally suffer most. Origin of man now proved, metaphysics must flourish. He who understands baboon would do more towards metaphysics than Locke. In conclusion, it appears that nothing can be more improving to a young naturalist than a journey in distant countries. The question of whether there exists a creator and ruler of the universe has been answered in the affirmative by some of the highest intellects that have ever existed. I feel most deeply that the whole subject is to profound for the human intellect. A dog might as well speculate on the mind of Newton. Let each man hope and believe what he can. But natural selection, as we shall hereafter see, is a power incessantly ready for action and is immeasurably superior to man's feeble efforts as the works of nature are to those of art. A fair result can be obtained only by fully stating and balancing the facts and arguments on both sides of each question 